This is the third time I'm making this video because where I started and what I discovered as I <laughs> went through the last two attempts made for a very long video. What this started out as was just a peculiarity with one meter, this Unity UT61E+, and something that I was experiencing when I was measuring current in the milliamp range versus the amp range. I thought it was an, a firmware issue, a bug, and I'll get into why that's not the case in a moment. Because the first time I was recording it, I discovered that my trusty amp probe experienced the same thing. But I was using this previously when I first noticed this issue and was not able to duplicate it with this meter for some reason at that time, but now I'm able to duplicate it easily. When I re-recorded it to kind of discuss how it was happening with both meters, it dawned on me what was likely happening. Now I'm making the third video, <laughs> third time's the charm, to explain what I think is happening here. Here's the conundrum. and I'll use the Unity as the test here. What I wanna do is pretty simple. Measure current across a fixed resistance, which is this set of 1% tolerance resistors all in parallel that are equating to about 1.1 ohm. This is what I've been using for battery internal impedance measurement testing. If you want to know more about that, there was a separate video coming out on that shortly. Right now, I'm just taking one of the ranges that I use and running it all in series. So here's the battery under test. You just connect this all in series. So I connect one end here across this terminal block to the positive end. And then with the alligator clip, connect it to the other side of the circuit. So now I have a circuit path, if I were to plug this into the correct port, that if I were to connect this, I would be able to get a measurement of the current flowing through the circuit. So when I connect this, I get 183, 184 milliamps, which, okay, that's a measurement. But if I switch to the amp range, it says 0.582 amps, which doesn't match at all what it said in the milliamp range. So what's going on? I thought it was an issue with auto ranging. It's not. Yeah, I thought it was an issue with a firmware bug, like I mentioned before, it is not, because it's duplicated across both these meters. I'm able to verify it with the amp clamp here. Let me put it in DC mode, zero it out. If I measure this right now, 0.578, there we go, 0.57, it's pretty much on par with what this is saying. And if I were to go and switch over to the milliamp range, so I unplug this, switch back to milliamp range, plug this back in, I get 180 milliamps. And you could you saw for a brief second there it said overload, overload or out of range, right? But then it jumped back to 181.34, it's climbing. And if I were to measure this again, I'll put it in the two amp range. I had it in the 20 amp range before, but I realized that I don't really need it in the 20 amp range. Put it back to DC, zero it, and then put the probe across it. I get 183 milliamps. So the current flowing through the loop is matching up with what the meter says. I then took this all out of the circuit, this whole thing, the battery completely out of the circuit. And I, took the meter and ran it from the bench supply. So you can see it over here plugged in. It's in standby right now. I'm gonna run it in milliamp mode. I'll put this, the impedance of this thing on the screen, but it's, it's a power supply. So it's trying to become as close as it possibly can be to an ideal current source or an ideal voltage source. So right now I have it, it's, it's at three volts, so low voltage. And if I turn this on, it's gonna current limit at about, let's just put it at 125 milliamps just to keep things in eighth of amp increments. So I'm gonna turn this thing on and we should see here that it registers about 0.125. So here we go. So let's try that again. So it's current limited, it's now in current limited mode because I'm short circuiting the, the supply and it's reading 0.118 and the unity is showing 0.126. If I continue increasing it, let's take it up to uh, 725. You can see that both the, it's still, it's current limiting because it's short circuited, and but it's showing 718 milliamps and on the unity it's 725. So getting closer to one another as the current goes up. Since we're in amp modes, 
let's take it up to four amps. It's showing 4.725 once it's current limited and 4.731, pretty much dead on with each other. So let's put this in standby. Oh, before I put it in standby, let me decrease that current back down to 0.725. Let's take this back down to 125 and we will disconnect this put it in milliamp range and switch it over to the milliamp range. And here you can see 124.3, right? It, it matches up pretty well with it. And this actually has a limit of 220 milliamps before it goes overload because it's a 22,000 count meter. And if I go a little bit above where it's at right now, let's take it to 225. It's probably going to overload. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It'll it'll go up to about 230. Oops. Try that, 230, and overload. So it can handle one amp on this a milliamp or microamp scale, but it goes out of range when it goes above 220 milliamps. Let me just show really quickly the other meter just to confirm what I'm showing before. This one's not gonna work in the amp range because uh, I blew the fuse on it doing other testing and I'm waiting for replacement that so we're just going to do it in milliamp range it's all we need to do because you'll be able to see the same the same behavior so here we go i will plug this in and connect that and we plug this into here and we should get overload should be overload because this should give us roughly 580 milliamps but instead we get 279.5 if i were to take this and plug it into the bench power supply, which I have to be careful because this one's actually rated 400 milliamp max and not one amp, so I can't go above one amp, which we're at 230 milliamps, so we're good for right now. So we'll just go that to that, and I'll switch around on the power supply here. We should get roughly about 230 milliamps. There we go. 223 showing on the bench power supply and 228 on the DMM. Oh, let me go a little bit out of range on this one too. It's rated to 400 milliamp. It's actually fused at 500 milliamps. So I can go a little bit higher than that. So if I were to go to 430 milliamps, will it go out of range? Let's find out. Yep, immediately goes out of range. So what gives here? I'm gonna turn off the power supply. Well, as it turns out, best I can tell, it is the interplay of the voltmeters themselves and the impedance in introduced into the circuit, especially a low impedance, we're talking one ohm in circuit here, coupled with the fuses that are being used in these devices. And so let's take a look at the fuses really quick. Just my expectation would be that these fuses, especially the low range fuses, would have a higher impedance than the high range fuses, nominal impedance. Fuses are a complicated subject. I'm gonna get into that in a separate video. We can at least do a check on this and see what is going on with the fuses to see if there is any appreciable introduction of impedance into the circuit, especially when we're working with low impedance setups like this. We'll start with the amp probe. We've already loosened the screw on the back, pull the battery out just to make this go a little faster. Cause like I said, I've, been, I've done this now uh, two times. And, haven't actually tested the fuses yet, but took it apart to see if I could get, you know, how quickly I can get access to and things like that. So I do have the other fuse that I did below on this. I'm waiting for replacements. They were hard to get for this unit, but here is the fuse that I blew on it. It's a Cooper Busman. This is the newer one, and this is the one that uh, I was quite excited about. So this one I've not taken, the, taken it apart yet. I think I am going to use something metallic, unfortunately, but I wouldn't recommend. There we go. These fuses are a little bit more uh, I don't want to break these fuses. I'd like to be able to still use them. We have the two fuses on the left here from the Unity, and then we have the low range fuse only for the amp probe on the right here. So I can still measure impedance because I don't need fuses to do that. But here, if I 
look at the am I using the I'm using the wrong probes this is what happens when you've got two meters you're going back and forth constantly did I just blow that fuse no I did not let's go with the low range fuse first let's go with the one amp better yet we'll start with the amp probe fuse we'll start with the fuse that was in this one which is only 400 milliamp rating for the meter but this fuse as you can see is a fast rupturing fuse at 500 milliamps this is showing about 1.2 ohms Again, this is a nominal impedance, so if we were at very low current, this would be a different, it's a different piece, but there, it is about 1.2 ohms nominal. If I look at the impedance of this, which is the fuse used in the low range, microamp and milliamp, and that should be, I think, lower. Yeah, 0.4, which is, yeah, it's quite a bit lower than 1.2. It's about a, th a third of what the amp probe was. But then again, this is a thousand volt fuse the voltage doesn't matter the voltage rating doesn't specifically matter as far as the impedance is concerned but it is a longer strand to give more clearance across the, the ends of the cap for for the for the voltage rating so you don't get an arc over and these are these are 250 volt rated so that's why i mentioned the voltage and then for the 10 amp fuse i imagine this is going to be much lower yeah 0 0.07 very very low which is why it it contributed almost nothing especially since we're only using it in the less than five percent of its its range since it is a 10 amp fuse so very interesting very interesting how these actually affect the measurements that you're getting so anyways hope you found that interesting definitely surprised me feels like the root cause of what's going on here let me know what you think. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.